This video will um, outline how to use the concept of combining resistors to solve more complex circuits. Uh, if you're looking at the PowerPoint on circuits, you're going to see fairly quickly that as they become more complex, it becomes very difficult to solve them with Kirchhoff's laws. So what we need is a way of simplifying a circuit into a more solvable form so that when we go to use Kirchhoff's laws, it becomes easier. Uh, the basic method here, if we have some sort of circuit, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to come up with an effective resistance that allows us to take, for example, this would be a simple circuit if it was either series or parallel, but the problem here is that they're combined, so that makes it hard. So what we want to do is we want to be able to combine individual resistors into one resistor that represents them effectively, uh, or we want to combine them in an effective resistance, and uh, then we can replace them with that effective resistance, and it'll make the overall circuit easier. So for example here, if, uh, if I was able to do that, I would leave this first resistor alone, and then if I could come up with one effective resistor that represents both of those guys, then I could replace it in the circuit as the uh, in their place as one effective resistance. And what I've been able to do here is I've been able to reduce a complex circuit that's a combination of series and parallel with one circuit that's a series circuit. So what we need to know then is how do we add resistors in series and how do we add resistors in parallel? The, the formula is right there. Resistors in series can simply be added that the, w that the uh, resistance of one, um, the resistance that represents multiple resistors is just the, the adding the actual resistance values themselves. But just to prove why, I'm going to solve, uh, solve this circuit right here. Uh, let me change that. So let's say I have this circuit right here. And let's just pretend this is 5, this is 10, and this is 20. And just for the heck of it, this will be uh, 10 volts. It doesn't matter. Okay. So if this is resistance 1, this will be resistance 2, this will be resistance 3. Again, that numbering is arbitrary. But what we want to do is we want to take all three of these resistors and create a circuit that only has one resistor that has the same effective total resistance of the individual resistors. Now from the past video if we were to solve this we would say that the voltage from the battery has to be equal to the voltage from the individual resistors. So if I call this V1, this V2, this V3, if I go up 10 volts that's like my 10 right there, then I have to go down in three different steps to get back to my original, and those would be V1, V2, and V3. And the total amount that I went up should be equal to the total amount that I went down. Again, V1, V2, and V3 are all different things. Just uh, Let's do that here. V1 does not equal V2, does not equal V3. So we can't solve this equation directly. If you recall from the past video, what we did is we used uh, Ohm's law in the individual cases. And then we used the fact that since it's a series circuit, we have a common resistance. Or not a common resistance, sorry, a common current. and. Uh, we use the fact then that I1 equals I2 equals I3, and we can simply call it I. Using Ohm's law, then we can re replace each of these terms. Sorry, I'm not going to call that I2. I just want to call those I. Now, 
Now we're actually in a really good place to prove the equation here. If we can imagine factoring out that common current Then if we go, go over and look at um, the um, the voltage loop of the simpler circuit, we would also be saying we go up 10 volts and then we come down uh, voltage total, which we're going to say is equal to current times resistance total. And what we can see here is that R1 plus R2 plus R3 is equal to the resistance total. In our specific case, that would, um, I'm just gonna sort of go from this line, but I, I don't have enough space, so I'm gonna go over here. In our specific case here, we had 10 is equal to I uh, five plus I 10 plus I 20, which is equal to 35. I, which again, this number is representative of the total resistance, 10. You can solve this, finish solving the circuit, 10 divided by 35, and then you could use that current to go ahead and get V1 or V2 or V3, but it's sort of besides the point. So that's why resistors in series, oh, don't know what happened there. That's why resistors in series in total using the equation R1, R2, R3. Um, and uh, you, you don't need to be able to prove that, but I just thought I would show that to you on the way by. Resistors in parallel. So again, to understand this, we want to start with a parallel circuit. I'm just going to include two this time. Uh, the proof for three is the same, but uh, I seem to be running out of room on the screen a lot of the time and I, I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Here what I want to do is I want to take a circuit like this. I want to take these uh, two resistors and simplify it into a circuit where I have one total resistance that represents those. Let's just put some numbers to this to make our lives a little bit easier. Let's say that's 5 volts. Um, what I would say in this case is that as the um, as the um, if you make a closed loop, each one of those resistors is going to get its full share of the voltage, which is good, but not particularly helpful in terms of seeing this relationship here. So we're not actually going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law for this one. We're actually going to use Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current, so I'll just erase that. Kirchhoff's current law instead focuses on the relationship between what I'm going to call I1, actually I'll call that I, uh, what do I call that, IB for the battery, I1 and I2. And if we look at, or <laughs> call 2, 1 and 1, 2, hold on a second here. I'll call this one 2 and this one 1. And then if I look at my simplified circuit, I can see that the current in the battery is really the only current affecting that circuit. Now Kirchhoff's current law says that IB is equal to I1 plus I2. The amount of current going into the junction is equal to the total amount of current coming out of the junction. If I take Ohm's law, V equals IR, and I arrange it for, rearrange it for current, I can see that I get that relationship. And what I'd like to do just to prove this equation is substitute that for each of these situations. So this would be the voltage of the battery divided by the resistance total is equal to the voltage of one divided by the resistance of one plus the voltage of two divided by the resistance of two. But recall what I said here when I was talking about these loops. Uh, since a closed loop in this circuit has you going up the battery and only down one of the resistors, you can recall that as in a parallel circuit, the voltage of the battery is equal to the voltage of one is equal to the voltage of two. And so uh, all the numbers across the top of this equation would all be, uh, in our example here, five. 
So 5 over the resistance total is equal to 5 over resistance 1 plus 5 over resistance 2. To come up with a general equation though, we don't want to have a specific number like we have in this, in this circuit. So what I'm going to do is just divide everybody by 5. And I get to my simplified formula for the sum of resist resistors in parallel in a circuit. Now, I, again, I did two resistors. You could add a third resistor, just be, you know, plus dot, 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 as many resistors as you want. This equation is going to hold true. Uh, now, so to solve this secondary part, we're going to, um, let's, well, let's just practice with this to solve a couple simple circuits. So here we have a 10 ohm resistor uh, in series with a 10 and 5 in parallel. And just like in the very first example, our problem is, let's just use a different color so we can see here. Our problem is these guys right here. They make it a mixed circuit, which is hard to work with. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our formula for adding resistors in parallel to, result, to take care of these guys. 1 over resistance total is equal to 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5 in this instance. So 1 over resistance total is equal to 1 over 10 plus 2 over 10 common denominator, which means 1 over resistance is equal to 3 over 10, or resistance total is equal to 10 over 3, or if you prefer, 3.33 ohms. So now my 5 volts, oh, so I can create a new circuit that's going to be simplified with the uh, effective resistance of those two resistors. So instead, I make a circuit that looks like this. Now with this circuit in hand, I can solve for one or two variables in the circuit. That's going to make everything a lot easier. And once I have that, then I can, um, once I have that, then I can go back and apply what I know to the overall circuit. So let's solve this circuit first. It's a series circuit, so I'm going to say 5 volts is equal to V1 plus V, I'm going to call it um, E for effectively replacing the other two. Um, and again, using Ohm's law, V equals IR, I can substitute uh, to get this expression into a common expression for I. 10I plus I. 3.333333 if you prefer. Uh, again, this equation is going to become 5 equals 13.3i and i is equal to 5 divided by 13.3. I should have brought a calculator. Um, eh, I'll just get one. Hold on. That's right, even in a prepared video, I can forget equipment and go and get it, just like in class. Anyways, 5 divided by 13.3 happens to be 0 0.38 amperes. With that in hand, I can come up with the voltage on that 10 ohm resistor, or I can come up with the voltage on the parallel resistors, or whatever it is. I'm just going to write it right here on the circuit. And then I'm going to notice that I have uh, all of the things for, for resistor 1. I have V1, I have I1, and I have R1, or I have, v, I have I1 and R1. So I can come up with the voltage in that situation. V1 
With that in mind, I'm actually going to pause here for a second and I'm going to redraw my original circuit. I'm going to apply the new information I have to my original circuit and use it to solve it. So the original circuit looked like this. It was 5 volts. It had a resistance of 10, 10 and 5. So 10 ohm, 10 and 5. So now, what I was able to do by looking at my simplified circuit is recognize that that is 3.8 volts and it has a current of 0 0.38 amps. Now if I consider a, a voltage loop, and I'll just use colors here to show you which one I'm thinking about each time. If I do this voltage loop, oops, that's not 5, it's not 5 ohms, that was supposed to be 5 volts, there we go. If I just look at my green voltage loop here, I can see I'm going up a total of 5 volts and then I go down 3.8 volts plus whatever my voltage is through what I guess I'm going to call resistor 2 here. Uh, that means that my voltage is 1.2 volts. So I can uh, add that I'm just going to get rid of that. I can add that to my circuit. Since I have two things here, I can find the third. V2 equals I2 R2. 1.2 volts equals I2 10 ohms. And so I 2 is going to equal to 0 0.12 amps. I could use the exact same approach to find um, to find the voltage in the 5 ohm resistor and find out that because basically the same voltage loop can be applied that it's 1.2 volts and then find the current. But um, just to do something a little bit different, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use Kirchhoff's current law at this point. This isn't necessary, but this is just a useful technique to have for later, where I know that the total current going into that voltage is 0 0.38 amps, and um, 0 0.12 went down the first branch, so I can figure out how much must have gone down the second branch. In this case, it's going to work out to 2.6 amps. And with that, yeah, with that 2.6 amps in hand, I can find the voltage in resistor 3. Uh, 5 ohms times 2.6 works out to 1.3 volts. Uh, shouldn't 1.2 and shouldn't this 1.2 and this 1.3 agree exactly? Shouldn't they be the same? Well, this difference comes all the way back to this number right here. The total resistance of this, of course, was 3.33333 ohms. And so when I rounded it right here, I created a bit of a rounding error. That can lead to minor mistakes like 2.6 times 5 being 1.3, not 1.2 exactly. Uh, but what we're basically going to say in this situation is that 1.2 and 1.3 are uh, close enough. Sometimes when you do the sum of the total voltages in your circuits, you're going to find out it works out to 19.9 when you had a 20 volt battery or 20.1 or something like that. And those kinds of mistakes happen just due to these kinds of rounding errors. So just keep in mind when you round numbers, if the numbers don't work out perfectly throughout the remainder of the calculation, that there's a good reason for that. All right, finally, a big, ugly, terrible circuit. 
So to solve this circuit, we're going to have to take lots and lots of steps and draw lots and lots of circuits, but uh, we'll get through it. First things first, I'm going to take these two resistors right here and I'm going to add them. I'm not so worried about two resistors in series like that going down a branch of a circuit, but you can see that those two resistors are in parallel with that 10 ohm resistor and that's really what's creating a problem in the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse them down to one resistor and when I do that, uh, then I'll be able to add them to the 10 ohm resistor in parallel and get this to a simpler circuit. They're in series, so the resistance total is just the sum of the individual resistors, which means it's a 8 plus 7, and so it's 15 ohms. Okay, I don't actually don't want to. I don't want to call those resistor one and resistor two. So let's just label all resistors. Let's call this one one. Let's call this one two. Let's call those ones three and four and five. So what that means actually is really what I'm thinking about here is I'm adding resistor 3 and 4. Although those names are arbitrary, so what does it matter? Anyways, let's redraw this circuit. Replacing those two resistors with their one effective resistance. This guy was a 10 ohm, 5 ohm. This is a 10 ohm, and this is where we replaced with what I did in green, a 15 ohm resistor. Okay, now, we also then need to combine these two resistors. Use red for this one. I have a, they're resistors in parallel, so I'm gonna use this equation. Again, you can just use a calculator and evaluate these numbers if you want, but sometimes if it's going to work out nicely, it's easier just to uh, do the common denominator thing. It's not necessary, but it's not that big of a deal in that particular circumstance. So. Here's your 10 volt resistor, your 10 volt battery going into a 10 ohm resistor. And again, we haven't done anything with the 5 ohm resistor on the bottom, but we have replaced the two resistors on the side that were in parallel with this resistor. So now we can uh, now we can solve this circuit directly as it's turned into a simple series circuit finally. So our 10 volt battery is going to uh, be dropped across V1 plus V uh, effective, I guess I'm going to call that, plus V5. And I'm using the term effective because that's not actually correspondent to any part of the original circuit. So hopefully that will uh, remind us to be a little careful when we try to apply that value later. Uh, replacing the voltages with their equivalent Ohm's law statements. Uh, I kind of feel like we've done this enough now that I can just sort of swing through to this level. Still have that calculator from earlier. In an attempt to avoid too much of that rounding issue that we had before, I've included a, another decimal place here. So that's the current flowing through this simplified circuit. But we haven't done anything to change the bottom or the top resistor. So that's going to be 0 0.476 amps and that's going to be 0 0.476 amps. Now I can use um, Ohm's law on both individual situations there, V1 and V5. If I have two, I can always find the third. In this case, I have a uh, current of 0 0.476 and a resistance of 10 ohms, so that's going to be 4.76 volts. Remember, that's IR, of course, from Ohm's law. And in the in the fifth or in the for voltage five, 
I've got uh, 0 0.476 amps times a 5 ohm resistance. Uh, 0 carry 3. That's going to be, yeah, I'm just going to do it. 476 times 5. That's a voltage of 2.38 volts. So now with those two values, those four extra values, I can go back to the, the very, very original circuit and see if we can't work our way through it now. So the very, very original circuit, so this is 10, it goes through a resistor. That resistor had 10 ohms, a current of 0.476. and as a result a voltage of 4.76 volts into a 10 ohm resistor and what did I have on top the 8 or the 7 8 then 7 in series over here those guys came back together with what I think is a 5 ohm resistor yep to a 5 ohm resistor with a current of 0 0.476 amps and a voltage of 2.38 volts. All right, uh, that 10 ohm resistor that's sitting in the middle is the easiest thing to attack next. I'm gonna go across, down like that. There's my voltage loop. Again, I think I've been doing these enough. I can go fairly quickly. I go up 10 to the battery, down 4.76 through the first resistor plus whatever the voltage is on that unknown resistor. I think I originally called them resistor two or three. That's resistor two plus 2.38. Oh, 10 minus 4.76 minus 2.38 is 2.86. So this 10 ohm, oh, Excuse me. This 10 ohm resistor has a voltage of 2.86 volts and uh, 2.86 and then I can use Ohm's law V2 equals I2 R2 to come up with a current. and I get a current of 0.286 amps. Uh, you can solve this last part of the circuit in a couple different ways. I'm just gonna do the easiest way. If I know that I have 0.476 current coming into this junction, I1, and then that's gonna supply I2 and I3, and I know what I2 is, then I can figure out what I3 must be. So I1 equals, it's supplying both I2 and I3. 7, 6 amperes equals 2, 8, 6 amperes. So it's going to supply that guy and that guy. So how much is left over? 0.476 minus 0 0.2, ooh, 2, 8, 6. The difference is I3 is... 0 0.19 amp and that's going to be the current in that is going through this branch those are amperes okay so what I've left myself with here is uh, just a couple of uh, ohm, or yeah ohm's law calculations for resistor 3 and 4 to come up with those voltages for voltage 3 I3 R3 and for voltage 4 I3 R4 or I4 I4 but remember I3 and I4 are the same because it's the same branch so 0 0.19 times 8 or 0 0.19 times 7 So that's 1.52 and 
1.33 and I can add those to my circuit diagram. Now with all this in mind we can go back and look at one voltage loop that's going to allow us to do an overall check on our entire circuit. If I go all the way around the outside, I'm going to use almost all of the calculated values and see if I think I've uh, screwed this up or not. The left side, 10 volts, should be equal to the right side, which would be 4.7 six plus 1.52 plus 1.33 plus 2.38 now if these don't work out to be the exact same I'm not going to stress it because um, there may have been a minor error due to rounding so we'll just punch them all in and see I got uh, 9.99 volts and I'm going to say 10 volts is approximately equal to 9.99 volts as in they're close enough and I'm happy with my solution to the circuit. So there you go, there's a couple more examples of how to solve circuits by combining resistors. Uh, there's some of these in your book as well. I think you'll find as you go to do this that uh, I could just keep doing example after example after example, but until you do some practice and get going on it, uh, you're going to find it you're going to find it a little bit challenging. And as you do the practice, eventually it'll come into line. So that's the video on combining resistors.